Hello, hello, Picard here, and as a webcomic artist, there's really no shortage of just stressful things. Like, I mean, first of all, there's everything to do with doing backgrounds in general, but the thing that takes the cake for me is having to draw crowd scenes. There's nothing that gets my anxiety going, like having to come up with a bunch of different people on the spot. <laughs> so, a couple months ago, I actually bit the bullet and made myself a crowd brush. And it's made my life a whole lot easier, giving me a whole lot of peace of mind. So today I'm going to show you how to do the same thing. So before we start, you can actually go on the Clip Studio Paint website and find just a bunch of crowd brushes that lovely people have put up there that they've made on their own. But for me personally, I really wanted my crowds to fit the style of my comic. So I decided to make my own. All right, so first thing you wanna do is actually make your people. When you make a brush in Clip Studio Paint, you have to make materials first. Basically, the short of it is that materials are like individual assets that you can use to make up your brush. Now I know when it comes to people walking, my skills are kind of like shoddy at best. So one thing I recommend doing is going and getting reference. And in order to find that reference, I went to my favorite website, sketchfab.com. The cool thing about Sketchfab is that you can like rotate your models everywhere so if you need a different angle you can use that so what I did was I went and I screenshotted a bunch of different people and that's what I'm using for my reference before I get into the process process here's a few tips to help you when it comes to making your people so you might want to create a cranium circle and what that does is that just keeps all of your heads the same size I also for each row drew a ground line that way people's feet were lined up you're gonna want to vary your body type to avoid a sense of repetition um, I try to vary my ages too but if you're gonna do kids you're gonna have to put them on their own brush because Clip Studio doesn't know each material's native size so it'll just make your kids as tall as your adults to keep all of the, the uh, brush tips the same size. Pinterest is a really good place to get a quick abundance of outfits or like a reference for hair or anything you need to design your people. And lastly, if you want your brush to have specific colors, you can color each of your people here. But if you want to be able to use the color picker with your brush, you're going to want to have your people filled with white and outlined in black. All right, let's get into the process. So in my webcomic, each of my towns and cities has a different culture. So they have variations on the ways that they dress. And I didn't want the same people in every city looking the same exact way because that would ruin my world building. So what I did was I first made bases. They're genderless, they're featureless, and they're just naked so I can just draw whatever clothes that I want to draw on top of those. Then I went and made a new folder and drew clothes and hair and all that on top of them. I think of them kind of like dress up dolls. So whenever I want a new crowd I can just go in and draw new clothes over top of them. So once you design your people we can move on to the next step which is making the actual brush. Your first order of action is to duplicate your all the layers that you use and you're gonna make that flat. Then you're gonna make your background transparent because if not then whatever background color you have is gonna be used in the brush and you don't want that. Next you want to right click on that flat layer and go to convert layer and you're gonna convert your layer to grayscale. This is so you can use the color picker with it or again if you don't want to use the color picker and you have specific colors for your brush you don't have to do this. Next up comes probably the most tedious part because you're gonna have to lasso and do these next few steps for every person. So with your person lassoed you're gonna go up to the top and go to edit register material image then in the pop-up window you're gonna give your material a name and very important in the bottom left make sure you check use for brush tip shape otherwise when you go to search for materials later on it's not gonna show up then you're gonna pick a location to save your material I picked image material for mine but your location really doesn't matter because you can just search it up later on now just go in and do this for every person and you'll have all of your materials gathered so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go over to your brush panel and then you're going to take a brush that has similar properties to what you want for your crowd brush so like scattering or randomization it's really up to you and you're going to duplicate that brush because the only way to really make a brush in clip studio is if you duplicate one first and then just change up the materials so you're gonna right click the brush and hit duplicate subtool and then you're gonna go down to the tool properties and click the little settings tab a window's gonna pop up you're gonna go to brush tip and this is where you'll change up the materials and add in your own you can replace the materials that are already exist on the brush or you can just delete them all and start over. If you delete them all and start over go down to the add brush tip shape. In the box that pops up you can type in whatever name you put for your brush. For me I saved all of mine as the city that they're from. Then I could just shift hold select all of them. Once you add all of your materials as brush tips the only thing left now is to just play around with brush itself. For mine I wanted a different person to appear every time I made a single mark just in case I needed like solo background characters and plus I didn't want people repeating a whole whole lot. So when the same subtool pop up I went to 
stroke and chose the last option for the repeat method. That way I have one random round of people that won't repeat again until I completely cycle through all of them. Last quick tip for the color, if you did the method where you can use your color picker, keep in mind that your top color is going to be your outline color and your bottom color is going to be your fill color. If you have the top color selected, you'll get an outlined image, but if you have the bottom color selected, you'll get a silhouette, which is really good for crowd scenes in particular. And that's really that. Honestly, since I learned how to make these brushes, I'm kind of built different. <laughs> so I hope that you find a lot of help in this and I hope that you're able to make your process a lot easier as well. Last thing, if you want to read my webcomic, it's called Leftovers and you can find it on DeviantArt. I'll put links uh, either in the video or somewhere in the vicinity, like the description or something. But it's basically about a 19 year old girl named Asadi who is trying to balance being a Pokemon trainer with impeding responsibilities as an adult and I really love working on it and I hope you'll check it out and you, you'll love reading it. Anyway, I really hope this helps. If you want to share the brushes that you make with this tutorial, I would love to see them. Just go ahead and throw them in the comments. Okay, that's actually it now. <laughs> Real ending. <laughs> Pokara signing out.